Hey there, thanks for clicking on the video. I always think it is interesting to watch how other people take notes on their iPad. So I'm gonna show you how I take notes in the GoodNotes app on my iPad too. So to start, I am using the fifth generation iPad Pro 12.9 inch that was released in 2021, along with a handy dandy second generation Apple Pencil. I rotate between using the Nimble Grip from Uppercase and the Nimble Sleeve by the same brand. Love them so much that I now have a coupon code you can use if you wanna try out the brand as well and save some money in the process. There are a ton of note-taking apps out there now, some of which are free, and I have videos on those linked in the description. But when I was in college, there was GoodNotes, so that's what I used. So to start, I normally create a folder for each of the classes I am taking. And then with each class folder, I'll create subfolders of important categories of the class, which differed depending on the class, but it's usually something like assignments, lecture slides, practice, notes, etc. Important documents like the syllabus, I usually didn't store within one of those subfolders. All right, so now to the actual note taking part, I'll create a note within the notes subfolder if I have one, and I'll typically title the note with the chapter number and whatever the chapter or main topic of the lecture is. I didn't normally add a cover to these notes and I always opted for the grid paper template in portrait. The grid paper I used is actually what the grid paper template was in GoodNotes 4, which was the app before GoodNotes 5. I mean, duh, why did I say that? And it was different from the default grid template in GoodNotes 5. I found that I preferred the grid paper from GoodNotes 4, so I actually exported that template and then added it to the template library in GoodNotes 5. I can link the grid paper template I used, but if you never used the grid paper from GoodNotes 4 or aren't super picky like me, then the one from five is fine too. You can also add your own covers in the template library, by the way. And I have a tutorial on how to create your own GoodNotes covers if you want to check it out after this video. So to start, I like to have a fancy heading, which I'll either letter or use a super cool font for. And I didn't stick to the same font or lettering style. I just chose one for each class and then kind of stuck with that font or that lettering style throughout all of my notes for that one class. And then I would choose whatever accent color I wanted, which will make a bit more sense later, but essentially I chose a color for each of my notes and stuck with it. So chapter one might be purple and chapter two would be red and so on. And also I did this little decorative heading before going to class and starting lecture, so I wouldn't be wasting precious lecture time by doing this. Depending on how much I wanted to procrastinate though at home, I might add a drop shadow or some fun little light marks. All right, so for actually taking notes, I used the fountain pen at 50% tip sharpness and 50% pressure sensitivity. These settings actually weren't a thing in the very beginning, but this is what my pen defaulted to with the updates. And I found that this is what I always write best with. I have two main stroke sizes for my pens, 0.5 millimeter and 0.7 millimeter. 0.5 is just for regular note taking and writing in good notes. And then 0.7 was for headings. It gives the appearance that it's bolded and I like how it breaks up my notes, making them easier to read and study. So I'd write out whatever the main heading for my notes was in 0.7 and then would highlight it with a dark shade of my accent color. Always. I don't know why I did this, but it has stuck through years of my digital note taking. And then with 0.5, I'd go in and write in bullet points. Never full sentences unless I really had no clue how to reword something on the fly. And then I would add dash marks underneath bullet points to reference any additional info or just less important stuff. Then subheadings. Love those because within a chapter, there's always subtopics, at least in college. So I would write subheadings in the 0.7 millimeter size, like my headings, but then I would highlight those in an accent color again that was a lighter shade than my main headings. If you don't already know, I graduated with a BS in chemistry and a concentration in biochemistry, which means I took a crap ton of math and physics. So many equations. Equations always went in boxes with the pen color set as my accent color. And I'd like when those boxes were filled with color, which you can toggle on in the shape settings within GoodNotes. I also added tons of diagrams and mechanisms and pictures I did not have time to draw or literally could not draw. And I would outline those pictures or diagrams using the same accent pen color, but without the fill this time. And it just made things look nicer. 
And as a tip, you can tap the outline or shape that you create in GoodNotes and just adjust the ratio of it as needed. For things I wanted to call attention to or just important little bits, I also wrote those in my accent color kind of like out to the side of my notes. And occasionally I would add sticky notes or sticky flags, which are just images to my notes and those called greater attention to things as well. I have these sticky notes and flags in a ton of different colors and shades in the shop, by the way. And so that's how I took my notes digitally on my iPad. If I ever wanted to print my notes for whatever reason, which I did do occasionally, I would change the page template from the grid paper to a blank white. This made my notes look so neat since I was writing based off the grid, but then I'm saving ink and it just looks neater when it's printed against the blank white template. And just so you can get an idea, I'll show you what some of my actual notes from college looked like when I took them in the GoodNotes app. So that's how I took my notes using GoodNotes when I was in college. If you're deciding between an app like GoodNotes or Notability for college note taking, I do have a comparison video I'll link below. Or maybe you're after a free note taking app for now that still has all of those same features. You're in luck because I share free note taking apps linked in the description below as well. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit the thumbs up and subscribe button under this video to let me know. And let me know in the comments what class you're taking right now that you're excited for. See you next week, friends.